The next item in our agenda for discussion in the chapter of shear are built up beams or built up sections which essentially means that beams which are built up of two different sections not materially different but maybe two different boards which are sort of glued together kind of the problem we have seen or you have put nails uh, together to hold the boards together. Uh, these kinds of beams if you see all around your house you know you will probably find your bookshelves maybe or your uh, dressing table somewhere you have you know th these different boards which are glued together or nailed or nailed together so if you see some of these pictures these are you know very common examples so you know so it's a structure built out of, of uh, multiple parts so you have you know suppose you have this something like this and you have this glue at these interfaces over here or you have a bottom board and a top board over here and then these boards are sort of held together you know using these nails that you see or you have something like this where you have these you know bolts which are holding it together uh, one another classic example of this are in bridges you have these girders and don't be fooled by the depth of these eye sections which are there you can see the total height of a you know plate girder in a bridge you will learn more about this if you later take a course on steel design or bridge engineering the steel girders so on top you have you know um, uh, other members some two dissimilar materials which are there this is a case where you have two dissimilar materials and yet it is built up so you have this these bolts that you see they are called rivets so these bolts are essentially holding those two together so uh, in a nutshell these structures are very common so next time suppose you have some issue at home and you are supposed to put two of these things together and you are supposed to put some nails or some glues and so on so when you are putting the nails a common question which will arise in your mind is that how many nails should I put what should be the spacing in between the nails so this topic essentially addresses that issue right like how these nails uh, effectively resist the shear and how to calculate the spacing of the nails and so on so now if you remember that uh, this is an example which we did this was also a built up section where remember you had two boards which were you know this uh, let me mark them to jog your memory we had this b1 and this guy b2 over here where at this interface there was this you know plane of glue so this is the you know the plane of glue that was there over here now uh, remember that how we solved this problem in this problem what we did we had calculated the maximum shear so that was 19.5 and from that complementarity that vq by it and so on we had found that what is the tau which is going on over here so essentially here what this glue the job of the glue was to resist this shear the job of the glue which is applied along this interface along the entire length was to resist the shear force the longitudinal shear which is complementary to this vertical you know shear over here this tau and this tau remember they were complementary shear now the question here so let, let's make a note so the glue the job of the glue was to essentially resist shear okay. But now if I come and then tell you that instead of the glue over here, what if I put nails? So now there is no glue. I have removed the glue or there was no glue to begin with in between these two boards which were your uh, B1 and B2. Now instead of the glue, I have, I have to punch nails. So the nails, the job of the nails is essentially the same. The job of the nails is essentially to resist the shear. But now you see in between the nails you have gaps so one nail resists some amount of shear then there is a gap there is no glue there is no more glue it is just you know two boards where you have punched the nails over there so one bolt uh, resists the shear then the shear travels and then another bolt. so overall all the nails together is doing the job which the glue was doing so the question here right so the question here is that what is the spacing in between the nails how do you know you can go and you know punch as many nails as you want and then what you will do eventually you will end up you know spending a lot more money in buying nails now for uh, small two boards uh, the, the the price may not make a difference but but remember that if you are uh, say in charge of a uh, furniture manufacturing company right so you cannot you have to procure nails and you know these fasteners nails are also called fasteners those these fasteners in bulk so, so what is the efficient way to find that what is going to be the spacing on the nail so you see it's a very practical problem that you're dealing with over here so the question is that how do we find the spacing between the nails or essentially this quantity s over here 
right so let's take a closer look at the problem and try to find and in this in this section in this topic of the built up sections we'll come across a new terminology well not new you have you have heard of this terminology when we're talking about torsion as well which is known as shear flow we will revisit that one and see from the perspective of resisting shear so let's let's go ahead let's move on so if you see here now let, let's see that what's going on so here also you see you have two boards and i don't know if it's if it's not if it's not very visible over here you essentially have two boards let me mark it so you have one board which is the this is the demarcating plane that you see so here also you have uh, say board one and a board two and in the bottom figure here also maybe this is board one and board two and in both the cases these boards are held together by these nails that you see over here now try to visualize the problem or the system now we have hypothesized that along this, uh, we will come to this figure later we have hypothesized that here at this interface or at this interface or at this interface over here whatever is the tau right so here whatever you know was my tau over here or in this interface whatever is the tau is resisted in the longitudinal direction you cannot see the longitudinal direction here by the tau which is over here right? okay so now what is the force in this longitudinal direction so now you see each of these bolts right so the, if the distance if the spacing between the bolts is s each bolt the center to center in between the bolts can be taken that each bolt resists the force which is coming in between that region so what i am essentially saying that if if we take these bolts and if we draw this part over here which is also s because center to center because the distance between the bolts is so center to center is also s say right so each bolt said in this case this particular bolt that you see over here it is essentially resisting the shear force which is acting in this region in that you know from s from the center to center from the center of between these two bolts to the center of between these two bolts where these black lines are drawn so each bolt is resisting the shear which is going over there which is shown over here this is the you know you have one bolt over here another bolt over here this is the center to center in between the bolt something like this over here right so each bolt is resisting that that amount of shear and so what is the value of the shear each bolt is resisting so again try to visualize that we have this tau which is acting so let me explicitly write uh, you know tau over here right so the shear force which is acting in this distance s is what how do we get force we get force as stress times the area of cross section right? so so the the shear uh, force which is acting is going to be tau times this area this small rectangular area that you are going to have it is going to be s times the thickness of this board over here that is the t right so if i have to sort of you know make this maybe a bit more messier uh, it is essentially each bolt is resisting this one this is s times this guy is t which is essentially the thickness of the uh, this thing that you have let me write the t properly not to confuse with tau right so it is s times t times the tau this tau it is the force which is acting over over there right so let's let's make a note of that so force resisted by the force resisted by each bolt is going to be tau times t times s so this is the force resisted by each bolt so let me say that as f now this figure will make some amount of sense to you so here we have already said deciphered this is the s and this is the f over here now this q what is this guy q doing over here and also you may th you may want to think that this is maybe so if you get the if you if your problem asks you or if you want to find that what is the you know the, the 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 maximum spacing that you can provide that will of course depend upon the allowable strength allowable force the bolt can take so if the bolt cannot take any more you have to put more closer nails that you have over here so anyway keeping that aside the force resisted by each bolt is this one now if i take this guy over here and if i replace by a variable see if i rewrite that equation and bring f on the other side so f I can write as equals to a variable q times s over here right where q is essentially tau times t so what, what does that mean what is what is q 
because I have to multiply Q with S to get the force. So Q is essentially the shear force per unit length. So let's just write that over here. So Q, what I derive, so Q is equals to nothing but tau times T. Right? Now, what do we know about tau? Tau we know is equals to VQ divided by IT. We have seen that already. So that essentially gives you that VQ divided by I t times t so this t and this t goes for a toss and eventually what you get is the formula that q equals to small q equals to v q divided by i right now i have i have written this just as q and this q is essentially you know it is taking part in resisting the total shear v right and so that is why since it's resisting the total shear v i am going to write this q as q total or q tot right so we will see that why i am writing it as total because in some cases you may have two rows of nails we'll come to that example so just for the sake of discussion now let's make this q as q total pot Right. So, what we derived is a very important relationship over here and this Q my friends is known as the shear flow. So, this is and why is it called a shear flow? It is the shear force per unit length. You see shear force if you do F divided by S. So, that is the shear force per unit length. So, that you see over here. So, this is the shear flow which is acting. So, you take this Q, you multiply with this S. You take the Q, you multiply with this S and maybe I can mark this as, as, as a you know total here as well so you take the q total multiply with s that will give you the shear force which is being resisted by each bolt over here so this q is known as the shear flow So, we now know what is this Q total that is the V times Q is, that is the shear flow or, or it can also be written as shear force per unit length. Now, now let's come to some of the other special cases. So now we know how to calculate the force which is coming in in each bolt. We calculate the Q as VQ divided by I, right? Now we know how to calculate this already, although we will come to the discussion on how to calculate Q in these cases, times the S. So your to calculate the spacing S is nothing but F divided by the Q total in this particular case, right? So now let's come to some of the other examples maybe here is that now what if instead of having just one row of bolts that is there so you had just one row of bolts what if you have two rows of bolts so the problem gets a slightly more involved right although it is not if you think about it so here you see here you have one board over here and you know the two of the other boards over here so if you just mark it over here maybe i can write this is your uh, b1 and this is is your b2 so here also if you just you know come from the balancing of the forces from the moments from where we had derived our uh, expression for the shear that vq equals to our um, that tau equals to vq by it and so on see here also when you're applying the moment remember that shear in addition to being transverse it is also longitudinal so what what this what will happen here if you have you know these kinds of you know these are the results of the moments that you have you know those triangular stress distributions part of that over there as a result of that this board will get try to be pushed in this particular direction if you have the shear because your longitudinal shear is complementary to the transverse shear that you have and essentially what these bolts are doing it's keeping everything intact it is keeping everything in place so you have two rows of bolts over here so you see in this case also if the total shear force in this particular case let's say the total shear force which is acting here is still v now in this case as well i can write my q total as v q divided by i this is what we had seen previously right so this is what we had seen now the only difference between here and the previous one you see now instead of having one row of bolt you have two rows so this row and this row so you can imagine this as that 
this v essentially gets split into v over 2 v over 2 over here so each row of bolt each row of this bolt in the longitudinal direction along this longitudinal direction that you have it resists this complementary v over 2 and this bolt over here also resists the v over 2 over here so for each row of bolt i have a q each so if each for the total q the total q by both the rows by this row and this row is resisting the total v v over 2 plus v over 2 that is equals to v so is the total q so but for each row of bold it resists a value of q over 2 because it resists a value of v over 2 so if i have to write for each row of bold now so let, let let's write that so for what i will get is Correct. So you see in the previous one, if you compare it in the previous case where you had just one row of bolt in that your F that is the force resisted by each bolt or the allowable strength of the bolt, however you want to call it was Q total times S. Whereas when you have now two rows of bolts, it becomes Q over two simply because each row of bolt is resisting V over two that you have over here. So for each row of bolt you have, so this Q is actually, so this, this should ideally be written as Q total right or for each row for each row of bolt we have the q e each if you if you want to write it in that way that q each is essentially q total divided by 2 right so which is essentially substituted over here so this particular guy over here is nothing but q of each each row of bolt that you have so q each times s is equals to s so this is this is important to realize when you have one row of bolt two row of bolt or three rows of bolt and so on Right. So this is a similar thing that you see uh, in, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a similar pattern over here. So if you have, you know, uh, the, your boards made of something like this see here, the central part is one composite board over here. So this is your B1 and these outer parts is essentially your secondary boards that you have b2 and maybe you have put glue over here this figure just shows that this interface shear that is acting that we also saw in the previous pages that is there right now also uh, now as i said so q equals to vq by i so we have already seen this. this is the total q again so again let's make a note of this so this is important to realize that the total q which resisting the total shear equals to vq by i now this is again brings back when you have you know instead of one row you have two rows of bolt or three rows of bolt that is there so you see here you have one row of bolt so your q each is going to be equals to q total so it is nothing but equals to in this particular case q is equals to q total right where you have two rows of bolts now then each of them becomes q over two or q total over two Right? That is, we can write Q each equals to Q total over 2. When you have three rows of bolts, it becomes Q over 3. So it becomes Q each equals to q total over 3 so i hope this idea is clear so more the number of rows you have each row has to resist lesser amount of shear so the total q you know gets segregated into you know q by the number of rows that you have over there then okay all right so now one of the questions one of the questions is that let me maybe just go back to the previous one that here you see one of the important things here is that in this formulation this is v is fine this is the total shear force that is acting across the section that is here so that crosses the entire section v or across the entire section v i is always for this entire cross section not a part of it but the entire cross section now again the question is that how do i calculate the q when you are talking about built up section should i take the q for this entire thing for here or just this board or just this part over here i don't know how, where do i calculate the q now remember that the these nails right these nails what you see over here are essentially resisting the shear of the part which is being slided off so here this nail is resisting the shear which is acting across this entire board because this entire board is supposed to be you know sliding off because of the longitudinal complementary shear 
here this board this in between this dark board that you see over here it is resisting the shear which is trying to slide off this portion this entire portion so this in this case you are to calculate q you should ideally be considering this one because this is the q which 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 goes into into you know the the amount of shear which is acting on that particular board here also see these three boards are resisting the shear which is trying to slide off this board so you have to be a bit judicious and careful of which of the q of which part you are computing so let's take a you know closer slightly closer look at that that how to consider or which area to consider for q over here sorry this here my camera overlays over here but this is the word concept so which area to consider for q so the rule of thumb is that you that you find the loose part of the built up section which is likely to be sheared off so you find the part which is loose which is likely to be sheared off right so you calculate the q for that loose part over here the easiest way to do that is that uh, that you take a section right and you hold the section just below the neutral axis that is there so for what i'm trying to say is that here you come and you maybe you know put a uh, let me move that slightly up okay you put a board or something over there and then you try to push that section aside so it may be become more clearer in this one over here that you locate the neutral axis you fix the structure below the neutral axis so let's say that here for any one of the boards if i want to do say for this one say in this particular case over here the neutral axis may be somewhere here so i am trying to hold the fix the structure below the neutral axis so let me draw this you know a fixity kind of a thing so i am fixing the structure below the neutral axis now apply a push to the cross section so for this entire cross section you apply a push see which part is about to slide or shear off so you see over here suppose these nails were not there now i am trying to find the q for the area first without take without uh, assuming that the nails are there so so here you see this is made of you know two boards again so here let's say oops let's say uh, here this is my board one see, this is the interface where this you know, whole board one is right and say the bottom parts are the boards too okay so if these nails are not there if i fix it and if i try to push this section which is the area which is about to slide or shear off this is the part the b1 is supposed to be to slide or shear off over here so you are essentially going to calculate the q for this entire area so the these nails that you have over here are resisting the shear which uh, which is acting over that area which is supposed to be sheared off or slided off so coming to a similar concept for the other ones in the first figure it is going to be this area over here see in the second one if you hold it over here if you try to push it see this is where the bolts are the area which is going to try to get sheared off is this entire thing the third one we already did in this one you see in this one there is one board over here and the two other boards so if you are trying to slide it off the q you are going to have to calculate is just for this particular board over here and the last one is for this particular board over here so i hope that overall you know this discussion is clear that how to calculate the q or for which area to consider to calculate the q and then remember that uh, my small q total is equals to v times capital q divided by i and it also depends upon the number of rows of the bolts which are there so let's do a couple of problem examples to reinforce some of these ideas and you know get our minds clarified of the concept of the shear in built up sections